Your life is your life. Don't let it be clubbed into dank submission. Be on the watch. There are ways out. There is light somewhere. It may not be much light, but it beats the darkness. Be on the watch. The gods will offer you chances. Know them. Take them. You can't beat death, but you can beat death in life sometimes. The more often you learn to do it, the more light there will be. Your life is your life. Know it while you have it. You are marvelous. The gods wait to delight in you. That's a poem by a man named Charles Bukowski. He called it The Laughing Heart. Bukowski had a lot to say about the darkness and about dank submission. I'm going to follow up that poem by reading you parts of a letter that Bukowski once wrote to a friend. Hello, John. Thanks for the good letter. I don't think it hurts sometimes to remember where you came from. You know the places where I came from. Even the people who try to write about that or make films about it, they don't get it right. They call it nine to five. It's never nine to five. You know my old saying, slavery was never abolished. It was only extended to include all the colors. And what hurts is the steadily diminishing humanity of those fighting to hold jobs they don't want but fear the alternative worse. People just empty out. They are bodies with fearful and obedient minds. The color leaves the eye, the voice becomes ugly, and the body, the hair, the fingernails, the shoes, everything does. As a young man, I could not believe that people could give their lives over to those conditions. As an old man, I still can't believe it. What do they do it for? Sex, TV, an automobile on monthly payments, or children? Children who are just going to do the same things that they did? Early on when I was quite young and going from job to job, I was foolish enough to sometimes speak to my fellow workers. Hey, you know, the boss can just come in here at any moment and lay all of us off just like that. Don't you realize that? They would just look at me. I was posing something that they didn't want to enter their minds. They never pay the slaves enough so they can get free. Just enough so that they can stay alive and come back to work. I could see all this. Why couldn't they? I figured the park bench was just as good or being a barfly was just as good. Why not get there first before they put me there? Why wait? I just wrote in disgust against it all. It was a relief to get the shit out of my system. 
And now that I'm here, a so-called professional writer, after giving the first 50 years away, I've found that there are other disgusts beyond the system. So the luck I finally had in getting out of those places, no matter how long it took, has given me a kind of joy, the jolly joy of the miracle. I now write from an old mind and an old body, long beyond the time when most men would ever think of continuing such a thing. But since I started so late, I owe it to myself to continue. And when the words begin to falter and I must be helped up stairways and I can no longer tell a bluebird from a paper clip, I still feel that something in me is going to remember, no matter how far I'm gone, how I've come through the murder and the mess and the moil to at least a generous way to die. To not have entirely wasted one's life seems to be a worthy accomplishment, if only for myself. And Bukowski signs it, your boy, Hank. There's a lot to say about what Bukowski is saying here. And I think that uh, in the days to come, we will elliptically discuss it in my clean, well-lighted Bukowski kind of way, breathing clean mountain air. But for now it's enough. Maybe listen to that poem once again to pull yourself up out of the murder and the muck and the moil. And I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>